So this is a quick Photoshop lesson. It's very, very straightforward. Now, if you're wondering how to use layers and masks, this is going to be for you. So what you want to do is check out initially this mood boards folder. This is what the final product looks like. So you've got about four images here that are layered on top of this one image, and the one image here is just a giant background image there. So how do you do this and what do you do? Well, there's a couple of things. One of them is you can just have a layer, which is just an image on top of it. Two, you can have a layer that's got a bit of a mask on it, with some parts of it being transparent or semi-transparent. This is a gradient one there. You can have a hard cut. You can see that here. So it's just cut out of this. And you can also have one that's soft with an overlay on it, which changes the actual image in some way. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start off without any of this. So we close all that. That's your final one. You want to do a few things. One of them is you want to collect some images, and that's your assets. So here I've got these collected already, so these are the images that we want to use. So we can just drag them into Photoshop. These are all the images we want. And then you get to decide how you're going to composite these to create a mood board. Now that's just something that gives away the general impression of the game you want to make or uh, how you want to set the tone or the mood for the whole experience that people are going to have. So this is the image I've chosen as the main image. It's going to be the background image. Now, it's not necessary to use the whole thing as it is. We can, we can use parts of it. We can crop part of it if you want. Um, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that it does exhibit all the main things that you're after. So in this example, it's a space game. We want to have a space game. Uh, we want to have a damsel in distress, which is what Elizabeth is here for. We want to have a protagonist in armor, so that's what Master Chief represents. We want to have aliens, which is what this image represents, and we want to have speed as well as this kind of uh, this level of damage and this level of, of complexity in the objects in the world. So we want it to be a little bit realistic and as well a little bit over the top in terms of how much uh, action we have. So that's why those images were selected. Now, once you have them, what you want to do is you want to composite them together into this uh, one image. Now, there's a few ways of doing it. Uh, but first things first, we need to crop this down to a size that we're comfortable with. So what we're going to do first is we're going to basically go and check the canvas size. You can see this in pixels is huge. It's 8,000 by 4,000 pixels. Uh, I'd be more comfortable with having something around this size with about this much uh, size. This is 1080. And if we cropped it from the corner, you can see we lose a lot of information. That's not what we want. So instead what we do is we pick a portion of this that we're actually happy with or that we like. And uh, let's say we want to composite things onto uh, this part of the ship. So we can just say this is the part of the image that we want. We can use the image crop, which will reduce the image down even more so. We can then go to image size, go to pixels. And if we change this to 1920, and this number here for the height is less than 1080, that means that we need to crop the image on the other side. But if it's 1920 here, and it's, the height is bigger, that's OK. It just means we're going to have to crop the top and the bottom in a moment. So we do that next. Click OK. Uh, we can zoom up. You can press Control plus on the keyboard to zoom up. This is at 50%. We can grab this marquee tool here for the actual uh, selection. Now you can see I've got centimeters there on the display, so I want to change that to uh, pixels. So we can do that in the info setting if it lets me. So there's my info panel. And we want to go and change the panel options to be RGB because we're working on the screen, actual colors, and pixels. So now that we have that, we can now drag this. And you can see we've got a pixel display, so it's got those numbers. Now what I want is 1080 pixels on the height. That is my selection now. Now I can click the selection and move it around, and this will help me crop it. I can then click Crop, and now I've got my background image. Now, if you don't want to do 1080 because 1080 is too big, you don't need that kind of resolution, you're not going to be printing it or you're not going to be putting on a on a big image, you can resize this down to 720. So this is just HD. And this will give you an image about this size. This is at 100%, and we can work with this. 
So you save this as your main image. So you go up here and you save this as a Photoshop document. So this will be your mood board uh, demo. This is our demo one compared to the other one. And once you have that uh, PSD ready, what you can do is you can grab these other images and put them on top of this. Now there's a few ways of doing it. Uh, one of the ways I prefer is to go in here and actually just select the portion of the image that I want. Just go to edit copy. I prefer using control C to copy it. Also I can do control V to paste. And again if the image is too big right now you don't need to worry about it because you'll get to reduce it later. You then want to see, okay, I want the whole Master Chief here. So you can grab the whole image, copy that, go back to your mood board, paste it in. You can close these down once you've uh, copied what you want from them. The hive mind here, and there you go, copy that, paste that, and then copy this, and paste that. So now that we've got all of those images in your main uh, Photoshop document, you'll see that they're different layers. So I can say that this is Liz, and this is MC for Master Chief, this is my, my Hive alien, and this is my Burnout car. What you have now is named layers with a background layer there, and what we can do is start with the Burnout car. Now I do want to have it small and in the corner, so there's a few ways of doing this. One of it is I could change this to a smart object, which means I could resize this down uh, to something really, really small, and then be able to resize it back up because it's a smart object. Uh, it does increase the size of the Photoshop document, so I don't recommend you do this unless uh, you really, really, really need to go back to the larger versions of these, which you can see I can do because this is a smart object. Um, so if I just go back in time before I made the smart object, what I would tend to do is since I have the original in the other file, I can just live with this and resize this down to the size I want it. If I make a mistake, I can re-import it and get the car back in here at the size that I would prefer that. So there's my car, um, and that's just a layer. So that's the burnout layer. I can use the move tool here, and I can right-click to select either the background layer or right-click on the burnout layer to quickly select layers, which is uh, easy. I can turn them on and off with the eye here. Um, and then I can go on to work on the Master Chief. So him, I want to have him in the bottom right hand corner. So what we do is we just position that there. Again, we, we press Control T for the transform. Now if you don't like Control T because you don't like shortcuts, you can just go in here um, and do the free transform option which is selected underneath the edit menu. Resize this down to the size you want him to be. Position him where you want him to be as well just over here and then once you've got them what I want you to do now is add a layer mask which is this little tiny icon down the bottom here now if you add a layer mask to this area you get this new layer over here it's all white you can then go and select uh, with the lasso tool for example a portion of the screen that you want to add the mask to and then you can do a fill so you can do Shift F5 to open up the fill, do the foreground color, which in this case is black, click fill, and that will just cut that portion of the image out. You can continue doing this for the whole uh, scene. So I'm just going to leave the gun and the buildings and press Shift F5, fill that in. Do the same here. Again, I said I would leave the building, so I'll do that again. Go around that building. Fill that in, um, and you start to see that you've get that shape that you were after, which is just showcasing Master Chief, the building that's there, and removing any of the background elements that you don't really want to be showing in this mood board. So you can do all of that in here, and be done with it. So it's very straightforward in terms of how you do it, and that's a hard-lined uh, channel. So if you have a look in here in the mask, there's a very hard lines. So there's no 
no gradients, nothing there. If we take the example of Elizabeth, firstly, I'm going to flip this image. I know this is not right, but I'm going to do it anyway. There you go. So I'm going to have that image, so her, her hand and her face is this way. I'm going to put this down the bottom here, resize it again, and just position her to pop out. this much. Now what I can do is rather than uh, have a hard line like we have on Master Chief here, what we can do on Liz is add another layer mask and this time take the brush tool and rather than um, doing the, the selection I can just draw black and this brush tool at the moment is too small so I'm going to make the brush tool bigger so you can pick that, you can get the size up you can also use the, the, the bracket keys, the greater than and smaller brackets so that you can actually um, change the brush size, so if you need to make it smaller or bigger, you can click that. And I'm just going to paint this black, but because the brush has this feathering effect on it around here, so the hardness is very, uh, very small, any time I put the brush over here, you can see that what happens is that layer gets painted. And if we look at the channels here, that's what I'm actually painting. And so when you look back here, I can just kind of get rid of some of that Rapture City background there. I definitely get rid of that because that's text backwards, so it shows that I flipped her, which is you know, not something I should do. And I can just go around that to show a little bit more of anything that I'm interested in. There you go. And that, that's just an effect that you can have. Again, you can just flick colors here back to white if you need to bring any of it back. That's the idea of masks. Anything you take away, you can bring back by just switching colors. Now, the easiest way to switch colors over here is to press X on the keyboard. Um, and that will give you uh, the alternate color, and that switches the foreground color with the background color, which is really nice and handy uh, for doing masks. And so this gives us a little bit of a, uh, an idea of how we can have these multiple layers uh, in effect. The last one here for the hive, this one goes up in the top right hand corner here. What we can do with him is play around with how this image is shown. So currently if we just move the image where we want it to be, make it a little bit smaller still. So just grab that corner. There you go. Make that smaller here. Again, we can mask it, add the layer mask, grab the brush tool, just get rid of some of that borderline stuff that we don't want or need. And then if I took away too much, I can just add it back in. Um, and then what we were interested in really here. Uh, is to explore how can this be a little bit more creepy, how can we kind of have this uh, hive alien a little bit more scary, if you will. And what we'll do is we can basically uh, invert this. So we go to Image Adjustments Invert, and now this X-ray effect kind of uh, is visible on the alien. Now if he's not visible enough, we can add another thing here which is called these uh, adjustment layers. And we can do some stuff here like do levels, so we could add a levels one uh, just above the hive, which means that what we could do is play around with how um, that affects this, the visibility of this. Now because I don't want it to affect all of the other layers like it just has, because this, you can see this is just for all the layers below it, there's an option for this to uh, only affect one layer. So this will just clip the one layer below it which means if I'm playing around with this, it's just affecting that one layer of the alien that we were messing around with before. And so with this, I can kind of give this little x-ray feel to this alien, and, and he's there, and we can see he's there, and we, we can see he's evil looking, um, but we don't see him as he looked prior to that. If, if you remember um, this alien before we inverted him, looked like that. And now that we invert the alien, uh, and we add this mask, not mask, but adjustment layer on top of it, you can now see that he looks a little bit more creepy and a little bit more foreboding, which is what we wanted to. Now obviously you could keep going with this, but this is meant to be a short demo just to show you how you can uh, use masks and layers in Photoshop to create a simple mood board. Uh, if you need more information about mood boards, Google's got a whole heap of resources for you to check out, so please just read as much as you can on them. 
but typically what you want to do is use them as a communication tool. You want to communicate the main emotive and cognitive qualities of your uh, work, whether it's a whether it's a game or even a trail or, or anything that you're working on creatively, and you want to put those images together to tell a little bit of a story as well as elicit some of the main reactions from people that you're after. So hopefully this has made sense. Uh, please comment if you've got any questions and uh, let me know if you need anything more. Alright, thanks for watching.